In our previous three videos on the curvilinear coordinates, the cylindrical and spherical coordinates, we defined the basic relationships between the curvilinear coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates. We had a look at the scale factors that tell us what is the path length in a curvilinear system, uh, given small changes in the coordinates. And we also looked at how we define the unit vectors in the curvilinear coordinate systems. Now putting all this together, we want to also combine this with uh, our understanding of the vector operator, this that one symbol. So we saw in the Cartesian coordinate system that this was d by dx, d by dy, d by d z times i, j, and k. And this was a vector of derivatives. So the change we're going to make here for to generalize this to any curvilinear coordinate system, we're going to replace these y, x, y, and z with the x, 1, x2, x3, and then taking into account the scale factors, wherever we see a dx1, we're going to have an h1, and wherever we see a dx2, we're going to have an h2, and so on. So this is how we define the vector operator in curvilinear coordinates. Now we can use this definition to actually write out what is the gradient, what is the divergence, what is the curl, and what is the Laplacian in this coordinates in a general coordinate system. So uh, looking first at the gradient, we need to look at its components uh, using the unit vectors for the coordinate system that we're working in. So the gradient let's say of some scalar field psi. Okay, so in this in the uh, curvilinear coordinate system, we're going to have to have a d by dx1. We'll have the scale factor h1. And this is the component in the i1 direction. Okay, so I'm just multiplying up. Oh, up here in this general definition, I should put in the unit vectors in these coordinate directions. So we have an or these i1, i2, i3 define an orthonormal basis at any point, but they're, they might be functions of position. So now multiplying in psi to that expression, the gradient looks like this. So we have also d by d x2, d by d x3. We've got our scale factors, h2, h3, and we've got our unit vectors, i2, i3. So we multiply psi into this whole expression. So the gradient just comes from scalar multiplication of this vector operator, nabla, with the scalar psi. So that's the gradient. Uh, well, the divergence uh, is slightly more complex. Uh, it involves a little bit of algebra to work out a nice form for it, but we can write it out as follows. So I'm taking the divergence of some vector field a 
So out front, we're going to have one over h1 of h2, h3. So this is coming from the dot. It's maybe it will be more helpful if I write out the dot product first. So that first of all, what I'm doing is taking the dot product of this right here. So d by d x1, d by d x2, d by d x3. Scale factors h1, h2, h3. Unit vectors i1, i2, i3. Adding those up, and I'm taking the dot product of that with this uh, vector field defined as a1, i1, plus a2, i2, plus I3. So these are the two vectors that I'm taking the dot product of. So when I when I do that, now I need to uh, I want to factor out these scale factors, and I'm going to bring them inside over here. So the way that the divergence works out is I have one over h1, h2, h3 up front, and then in the brackets, I'm going to have d by d x1 of h2, h3 a1 plus d by d x2 h1 h3 times a2 plus d by d x3 h1, h2, a3. Okay, so notice that these scale factors are inside of the derivative operation. So I'm going to have always a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So whatever the derivative I'm taking, that's the a component that I'm taking, and the other two scale factors are inside the bracket. So now in the same way I can work out the curl in a general curvilinear coordinate system. I'm going to have a cross product of this Nabla operator with the A vector field. And as we did when we looked at the curl, We'll define that in terms of the, a determinant from linear algebra. So uh, this one is equal to out front. Actually, I should shift this over a bit. So I'm going to have out front the scale factors one over h1, h2, h3. Uh, in the top row, I'm going to have my i1, i2, i3. In the second row, I'm going to have my derivatives, so d by d x1, d by d x2, d by d x3. And then in the bottom row, I'm going to have h1, a1, h2, a2, and 
H3, A3. So these look somewhat complex, but uh, in, in actual coordinate systems, many of the scale factors are just equal to one. So they, they simplify a little bit when you actually work them out. Uh, so the last one that we'll look at is the Laplacian. Uh, this one is the longest of them. So Laplacian and curvilinear coordinates. We get by letting let A in that dot product be equal to the gradient of some scalar field. So you might remember something like this from when we looked at the Poisson equation uh, in order to derive the, well, the Poisson equation. Uh, we, left, we had a flux variable, which was derived from the gradient of a scalar field. So to get at the Laplacian here, we do basically the same thing. We substitute in for A, the gradient of a scalar field. So actually what we're doing is combining these two equations here. So we substitute this equation in for A. So we know what each of the components are, and now we can actually work out what the Laplacian is in a curvilinear coordinate system. So Nabla squared of psi, and you have so one over h one, h two, h three. Now we're going to need several sets of brackets here, so I'll start with this uh, sort of curly bracket. So I'm going to have d by d x one. Now I'll go into square brackets and another and a set of parentheses now. So I'm going to have my h2, h3 over h1 times psi, or I should say times d by d x1 of psi. Okay, so that's the first term. Uh, so the rest of the terms I'm going to be sort of swapping around the indices. So the plus, I'm going to have a d by d x2 here, and a d psi by d x2 over here. And then in the third term, I'll have a d by d x3 and a d by d x3 here. So I'll have a set of square brackets here, and I'll have a set of parentheses here. Same thing here. I'm doing it in this way because sometimes with complicated expressions it's easier to remember it uh, by, by patterns rather than remembering each individual component. So these are my d psi by dx2 and dx3. And now these ratios in these sets of parentheses here are always the opposite two from the x component that we're looking at. So here it's going to be h1 and h3, and then the denominator is h2. Whereas down here it's going to be h1 and h2 in the numerator, and h3 in the denominator. So that's how we define the Laplacian in a curvilinear coordinate system. So just as a quick example, uh, so that you kind of see a more concrete sense of how this works out in a given coordinate system, I'm going to work out what the gradient is in the spherical coordinate system, and then I'll work out what the divergence is in the cylindrical coordinate system. So in the spherical coordinate system, I have that h1 is hr. That's just equal to 1. So I'll just erase it here. And I'll have my i r here. And x1 is just equal to r, 
were in the spherical coordinate system. For H2, I have H5. So that's R and here I have R sine theta and X2 is pi. And then I2 is I5. And then in the spherical coordinate system, H3 is H theta, which is equal to R. And then I'm going to have the theta here. And I theta here. So this particular example is for spherical coordinates. Now for another quick example, we'll put in what is the divergence in the cylindrical coordinate system. So I'm going to at h1, h2, h3 down here. In the Cylindrical coordinate system, hr is 1 and hz is 1. So the only scale factor that's not equal to 1 is r. So I'm going to put an r down here. Uh, I'm going to have here I'll have d by d r, d by d phi, and d by d z. h2 and h3 are r and 1. So in here, I'll just have R. H1 and H3 are both equal to 1. So I can just erase those. And then H1 and H2 are equal to 1 and R. So I'll put an R in here. And then A1 is A sub R. So the R component of A. This is A sub phi. Phi component of A, and then A3 is the Z component. So notice that I have this scale factor out front, 1 over R, and then I'm going to have these uh, derivatives here. So that's how it works out for the cylindrical coordinate system for the divergence. So try it for yourself. Uh, the best way to work this out, it's, it's a little bit complicated and you kind of have to pay attention to the, the counting for all of the scale factors and the different derivatives. Try it out on your own and work out what perhaps the curl is in the spherical coordinate system and just until you get the feel for it. Okay, so this concludes the series on curvilinear coordinate systems. Thank you.